Why, hello there. Brent here, the Bring Your Own Tools, and on today's episode, we are finishing off this amazing summer slash fall project, and I'm gonna show you the actual budget of what it actually costs to get this project done. If you wanna learn how to do it, keep on watching. Let's get started. This backyard renovation has been truly one of a kind and I've shown you the entire process from start to finish and I actually just made a playlist for this entire backyard renovation. So if you wanna see any of the things you might've missed in the past, you're easily able to find it in chronological order. However, the only steps that I haven't shown you yet are comically the steps. The steps specifically off the deck and the landing that's right next to our retaining wall. So let's get these things taken care of and at the tail end, as I promised, I'll make sure and show you the entire budget from start to finish on this entire project. We previously built an amazing deck and retaining wall. However, there is approximately a four foot gap between the two. We need to figure out how we're going to connect the two with a landing. I built a formwork system for pouring concrete and the concrete is gonna be sectioned off in four different sections. I take a laser level to determine the exact height that I need the formwork to be in order to have the perfect height that meets up with our existing stair treads. I hammer in steel stakes in all four corners and then fasten them securely to the framework to make sure we have a guaranteed position for the forms that won't be moving on us after we pour our concrete. Once I have the positioning taken care of as well as my backfill, I double check my levelness and as long as that is good, we're ready to start pouring. We're going to be pouring a bit of crushed rock first into the each form because we want to make sure our freshly poured concrete is just not sitting on a bed of dirt. Once you have your crushed rock sub-base poured out, I do suggest wetting it down and then trying to compact it a bit prior to pouring concrete because we want a nice solid base to work upon. As for concrete, I'm gonna be using your standard 60 pound bags of sackcrete that is gonna be just a nice general high strength concrete mix. The one tip that I always have for people that are mixing concrete is to always pour the water in first and then pour in your concrete. This way I find it much easier to avoid those pesky lumps that no one wants in their concrete. I begin filling the first bay of concrete, and as I'm pouring, I do try and make sure and solidify all that concrete into the tight-knit corners of the formwork. Then I come back with a screed and screed off the very top portion so we have a very nice and smooth surface to work upon after it dries. Now the one thing I wish I thought about a little bit more thoroughly is that this framework was extremely difficult to remove, so much so that I actually just left it in there. I wish I made it so I was actually attaching those vertical slats to the retain wall versus having that one piece of formwork right up against my retain wall, but you live and you learn, and I'll think about that one a little bit more thoroughly when I do my next landing project. Once my concrete is dry, I take a pressure treated two x four and wrap it in G tape. Then I fasten each two x four down using the Tapcon drill and screw kit system. This was a really nice and easy way to fasten these boards into the concrete because the kit comes with the appropriate drill bit. You set your drill to the hammer setting while drilling into the concrete, then clean out the hole and secure it in place with the appropriate Tapcon screws that come with the kit. These ones are three inches long. I place three to four screws into each board, which gives us plenty of structural support. And just keep in mind that the top of these boards should align perfectly with the height of a retaining wall, which means that our stair treads are gonna be at the exact same height as the landing itself. With our landing framework taken care of, it's now time to proceed to our step. And for a step, we have to make a step down from the deck to the landing because of the fact that we have approximately 15 inches of height, which is way too much, and we don't want anyone to be busting an ankle trying to get from the deck to the landing. But luckily for us, being able to use two by eights, which is seven and a half inches wide, and therefore it makes a perfect height for this one step that we need. 
This step and landing are going to be four feet wide, which matches our stairs on our retaining wall. However, because we have a railing here, the railing does get in the way a bit, and therefore we do have to do some framework and some bracing around the sides to make sure we have the proper framework to be able to slide into place underneath our railing. I notch out the appropriate mount with my multi-tool, which makes quick work of any notching needs. And after I have a position correctly and level, I secure it to the deck with just a few exterior screws. At this point, it's now time for the decking boards. And for the decking, we're gonna be using the same stuff that we've used in previous videos, which is the Timber Tech Vintage Collection. And the color for these boards is English Walnut. And just like all of my videos, if you like any of the tools or materials that are seen in this video, I will make sure and leave links in the description box below on where you can find said tool or said material. For my stair tread, I do have to notch out a small section on both sides in order for it to fit perfectly and snugly right up against the deck. I use my deck spacers to make sure we have even space in between each board and then secure the boards in place with our Cortex fasteners. These are the same Cortex fasteners that we used on the deck, which provides an extremely strong hold as well as their amazing cap system, which matches our decking, which we'll get to shortly. We didn't have the perfect amount of spacing needed for us to have a full board at the very end of our landing. Therefore, we just ripped off a small piece and installed it just like all the other boards. But now that we have all of our boards fully installed, we just need to make sure we cap them off appropriately with their Cortex cap system, which matches our decking boards perfectly. Now I'm not going to show the process on how I fabricated and installed our other step on the opposite side of the deck because it was the same exact process, just no landing. So keep that in mind and at this point all we have to do is sit back, relax, and watch others install turf. Yep, one project that I didn't have to take on because I already have a turf video on my channel. So if you are interested in learning how to install turf properly, then make sure and check out the link above. But guess what? Now that we have our landing taken care of and the turf in, we are done. This was a project that was months in the making and is something that from the small details to the large impacts, this thing is truly one beautiful, sexy beast and one amazing transformation, as you can see. A huge thank you goes out to all the sponsors that were part of this project, whether it was ViewRail, TimberTech, Power Pro, Georgia Boot, and so forth. They were some amazing players that helped us along the way on this entire project, and I'm truly proud to be a part of a project that will bring so much joy and happiness to this family. But I know what you're asking yourself, what did all this cost? Well, let's take a look. That was a busy summer slash fall project. And as you can see, it was an amazing transformation, but there was a lot of time and energy involved with this project. With that being said, I had copious amounts of people asking me what's the cost and the estimate for all of this work. And I figured on this specific project, I'll actually share that with top secret pricing associated with BYOT. Now I just have to put in a little password. I have to put a little fingerprint action as well as retina scan, very official. Now I'm gonna go into detail as to where the cost is associated based upon the materials and labor for each portion. The first thing is the deck. Now the deck came in at a total cost of $17,258.26. Yeah, that's a lot of money just for the deck itself. Now you have to consider the fact that the materials for just the pressure treated and the timber tech decking material was extremely expensive, especially during the summer months. And that came in at 70% of the overall cost there. The labor was only 29% of that specific cost. Keep that in mind. And the retaining wall, after we got done with the deck, the retaining wall came in at 8,000 
$893.02. The materials alone for that was 65% of the overall, and the labor portion was closer to 35%. Again, materials were quite expensive on that portion, but it was actually a lot cheaper than doing it via stone, so also keep that in mind. The railing. The beautiful railing around our gorgeous deck came in at $19,827.54. Now, I have to tell you that that railing was expensive because the railing itself came in at 80, over 88% of the overall cost there. And View Rail is a gorgeous system. It's a high quality system and it's made here in the United States. So I always love supporting those type of companies. But keep in mind that is an expensive railing, which also included the railing for the stairwell down. So just know that you're gonna get a very high quality product, but with a high quality product comes at a price. The stairs, the stairs that also include the landing and the steps off the deck came in at $3,946 and 20, excuse me, and 92 cents. Now this was the only one where the materials is actually less than the labor. The materials was closer to 42% and the labor came in at closer to 58%. But keep in mind that the materials for this was pretty simple, just some concrete, some framing and some decking boards. But the labor to actually make sure that all those steps were perfect and aligned properly that what it took a lot of time and energy to do. So keep that in mind on that particular section. And finally, the section that I personally actually didn't do, but I did get pricing for was the turf, the stone walkway, as well as some of the more landscaping aspects of the backyard came in at around $16,000. Now the material for that was closer to a 63% where the labor came in at more towards 37% for that entire area. That is the pricing for this entire project. The overall budget for this entire backyard renovation was $65,925.74. That is the price for this project. Yeah, that was expensive, but keep in mind that we are also in an area where Seattle, greater Seattle area, you can add that to your home and guess what? You'll get that back. So we've completely transformed that backyard and therefore their house has increased in value probably at least $65,000 worth, especially in the area that we live in. And also keep in mind that the labor portion for all of these costs whether it was me working or someone else that was working on the project, I charged them at a $50 per hour rate, which in our neck of the woods is extremely reasonable for labor, especially good high quality labor that you know and trust. Keep that in mind and hopefully you can do some of this yourself. But it's been beautiful, it's been amazing, it's been one truly beautiful, sexy beast of a project, but I'm glad it's done. And now we just can move on to the next project. See you then.